So the story begins in the future, in the year 2057 where our sun is losing its light every day which is making the whole earth sink into darkness. And if this continues for a few years, then with the ice on the earth, the name and mark of humans and the rest of life will be erased. Because of this, scientists have found from their research that if a nuclear explosion is done on the sun, then by doing this, the sun's light can return as before. This is because an expert team was sent to the Icarus mission with the help of advanced technology. But due to some unknown reason, their mission failed because the spacecraft had disappeared somewhere before it reached the sun. Now what happened to Icarus, we will get to know later. For now, Icarus 2 mission is started about 7 years after this mission, in which a team of 8 people is present, whose names are Robert, Cassie, Miss, Seal, Corazon, Kanita, Trey and Harvey. Actually, Icarus 2 is so advanced that it has its own gravity due to which these people do not float anywhere. Now the time of the whole 16 months since this mission started has passed and now their ship is leaving the Mercury planet behind and reaching near the sun. That's why they may have to suffer more heat than the limit. Maybe that's why this place is called the dead zone, in which no one may be able to come back after going. That's why everyone gets a chance to send the last message to their loved ones. Because from here their contact with the earth will be completely broken. For which Robert goes first, but he was not understanding what he was saying. That's why he ruins the whole time in this and because of that he is not able to send any message. Because of which Miss gets angry at him and he starts fighting with him. See, Seal asks Miss to go to the oxygen room of the ship for a while. Where Miss experiences being on earth, which makes her mood better and she comes out and apologizes to Robert for her behavior. And both make up. But Seal gets a strange feeling that he keeps staring at the sun with his naked eyes for a long time. Actually, the AI of this ship only lets in 2% of the sun's light, but Seal increases it to 3.2%. But by doing this repeatedly, the skin of his face starts coming out. Meanwhile, when their ship is passing near the Mercury planet, they get some signals from Icarus 1, which was impossible. Because if they are receiving this signal, it clearly means that there is still someone alive in Icarus 1. On which Curzon says that this can only happen in one case, when the person who is alive is in his oxygen room. So now they had to decide whether they should complete their mission or go to Icarus 1. Now Miss was strongly against going to Icarus 1, because doing this would not only harm their equipment but also the time. But Robert's opinion was completely different. Because he believed that if they go to Icarus 1, they will get another nuclear bomb. So if their bomb could not restart the sun, they can use another one, which everyone thinks is right. So now Trey starts making a trajectory equation to get there, which makes a big mistake. In that, he had completely forgotten to use that factor, because of which many parts of his ship are shaken by the heat of the sun. Because as soon as they were moving towards Icarus 1, the heat of the sun was increasing. Because of which Trey feels very bad about his actions. And now because the shield panels were damaged. Canada and Robert go to repair it while spacewalking. And Cassie turns the unshielded part of the ship towards the sun, which creates a new problem in front of them. Actually, when the unshielded part is turned towards the sun, the part starts burning due to its heat. The fire reaches the oxygen room through the ship's communication center, due to which the whole ship starts getting destroyed. And to stop this destruction, they decide to leave all the oxygen there. Look at this, the ship's AI takes all its control and starts turning its unshielded panel back. But this was a threat to Canada and Robert's life. So Cassie tries to take control back from the AI. On which the AI tells her that if her one more companion agrees to it, she will be able to do it. For which she tries to convince the mace. But the mace is against it. So he now explains everything to Canada about the condition of the ship and the whole situation in detail on which Canada takes full responsibility and tells Robert to leave. Then he slowly manages to repair that part. But until then, that part is turned towards the sun with him. Because of which Canada is burned to death in the heat of the sun. So now she is safe. But now a new problem arises in front of them. Actually, the oxygen they had removed during this time, because of which they had a shortage of oxygen. So it was necessary for them to find Icarus I. On the other hand, Trey was very worried about his mistake. Because of which his mental condition was deteriorating. He even tried to kill himself many times. Because of which everyone made him unconscious with a drug. Then we see that these people have finally found Icarus I. They go inside the mace, Hovey, Robert and Searle. 
where they see that the oxygen room of this ship is absolutely safe. And there was no shortage of food and drink here. But then they get to see a video of the ship's captain, Ben Baker. Seeing which everyone is very surprised. Because in that the captain was saying that he will never let the sun restart. Because he believes that all this is happening by God's will. He wants to punish the earthlings for their deeds. Now after watching this video, these people move on. Where they see the viewing room. From where the sun could be seen. There they all get the corpses of the other crew members. Which was badly damaged. By which everyone had understood that someone must have turned off the filter here. Then all of them had this condition. Now this also tells everyone that due to some unknown reason, the airlock system between Icarus 1 and 2 had been blasted. Because of which these people could not go back. When everyone was badly stuck, then he gets the idea that if someone stops here in Icarus I and operates this airlock system manually, then all these people can reach Icarus I to Icarus 2 easily through its pressure. Because fortunately they got a spacewalking suit there. But whoever will stay here, he will have to sacrifice his life. So that everyone's life can be saved. That's why CL gets ready to do this job immediately. After which the spacesuit is given to Robert. Robert is an expert in detonating payloads. Harvey has a problem with this. But he agrees later. And together with Mace, they wrap the insulation in the spacecraft on themselves. After which they catch Robert and launch to Icarus 2 with the help of CL. In the meantime, Mace and Harvey's grip is lost. But at the right time, Robert catches Mace and he is unable to save Harvey. Which freezes immediately in the empty space due to the cold. And due to collision with the spacecraft, many parts of his body are broken. On the other hand, CL also comes in front of the sun's light due to the removal of Icarus 2. And he is badly beaten up by the sun even at the last moment of his death. After this, we see Corazon in Icarus 2, which according to its calculation, tells that now they have oxygen enough to keep only four people alive. And they are five. So now another man will have to be sacrificed so that this mission can be completed. After hearing this, Mace says that they should kill Trey. Because of his mistake, they are in this situation today. Here Mace goes to kill Trey with anger. But he reaches there and sees that he had taken his life before that. And in the meantime, the ship's AI tells him that there are still five people here. And that fifth person is actually in the viewing room. So when Robert goes there and sees, there he meets a captain of Icarus I, Ben Baker, who is in the ship of Kitchery Chuppin. And with his body badly burned, his mind was also damaged. Because of which he attacks Robert without telling him. Actually, because of being alone in Icarus I for a long time. Ben Baker had the belief that the sun is actually a god who is punishing the earthlings for their sins. That's why he didn't want the sun to be restarted again. Here Robert tries to escape from Ben Baker to save his life. But in the end, Ben Baker locks him in the space suit room. Then he goes and locks the mainframe computer server so that his mission is not completed. After this, he is after Casey's life. In the meantime, he risks his life and tries to restart the mainframe computer server. Where due to the presence of coolant, he was suffering from cold. During which, in the process of locking him, his foot gets stuck in the machine. Although he had succeeded in restarting it, but due to being stuck, his life was slowly dying. Here we see him doing something good for the first time without caring about his life. It means that he was getting revenge. That's why he somehow contacts Robert and tells him that he has to somehow get free and launch the payload from the ship. That's why Robert's mind now thinks of a dangerous plan to get free from there. He puts on a suit and with the help of a welding torch, makes a hole in the outer airlock door, which creates a lot of pressure. Here Robert stops himself with the help of a metal rod, but due to the pressure, a hole is made in the inner chamber. Then soon the whole door is separated. During this process, we also see Corazon's dead body, which is obvious that it was killed by Pinbaker. Here Robert somehow stops himself from going out and quickly separates the payload from the ship. Then he starts moving towards the payload for the activation of the next process. For this, he reaches the payload with the help of a space suit, passing through the rays that give the sun a shock. As soon as he wants to start the ignition, he faces the wounded Cassie. At the same time, Pinbaker attacks him, in which the sun takes over the Acaris 2 and they were also pulling the payload there. But in the end, Robert somehow gets rid of Pinbaker's clutches and starts the payload's ignition process somehow, 
which suddenly lights up everything, which looked great. As the ignition process moves towards the sun, the payload is also lighted up. With the detonation, the nuclear reaction starts. In the explosion, Robert is also buried but he gives his life while feeling the sun which shows us Robert's sister on earth who was watching his message. With this, she sees the sun's light spreading on the earth which clearly means that Robert and his companions have succeeded in their mission which means that soon everything will be like before and with this, the story ends here.